Hello. Good morning. Good morning. It's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are back again. So today we are doing a lullaby quilt, and I'm very excited that you have joined us. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Coming back every week, we've been doing this for a while, and it's so fun to see so many familiar names come up all the time in the comments. We're like, oh, there's that person. Oh, there's that person. So thanks. I appreciate it. One of the things we were talking about before the show started was some of the questions that come up because people have been watching for a while. So I'm going to just throw you under the bus right now, Hawk. Okay, we got the question about <laughs> does Hawk still long arm quilt was a question that we got. And um, so I just wanted to answer it really quick because I think it's, it's fun to see those people who've like watched for a long time and know like things happened before. What's happening now? Are you still doing that thing? And the truth is you, we couldn't take a long arm on the road. So <laughs> I, I gave up long arming for RV life. Yeah. So a uh. friend of mine has, <laughs> has the long arm that I had or the mid arm that I had before. And then Hawk actually bought a long arm from his aunt. It was basically it? gifted to me. I mean, I spent money on it, but it Thank wasn't God. market value. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, so all right, we're not going to move arm. fast. It's not ready yet. I don't have it all set he up. He has a long arm and this is what but it looks that's, like right now. That's mine. <laughs> And we're going to get into it soon, okay? Yes. So <laughs> the short answer is, no, he is not long arming right now. Will he long arm again? Yes. Okay. We have to get the rest of the pieces, get it all put together. But hopefully the um, plan is that, you know, by summer we'll be able to have it put together. He'll get some practice. And maybe in the fall we'll do another quilting episode for Sew Together Tuesday. So thank you for following up on us. It makes it actually makes us feel really loved and appreciated. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks for oh, the question. Yeah, it was good. I really, I really like those ones that like kind of, yeah, go back. Do you remember when you were doing it? We're like, oh yeah, that's right. Some people have been around for a long time. There are a bunch of new people and there are a bunch of new people on the I Love Cuddle group as well as here. And we appreciate all of you being here. Every week we do this every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And every week we do a little giveaway. So again, we'll do it today if you share the video uh, through Facebook or you share it on via YouTube and you copy the link and share it to people and tell us that you shared it. You'll be entered to win and at the end we'll actually give away two prizes. So we'll give away two bags that have a kit in it. So you'll get the Sew Together Tuesday tote bag and inside is a little kit and then they send you some little patterns and some stuffs and then you get a mug as well. The Sew Together Tuesday mug which Ta-da! It's prominent at the beginning of the show there. So very fun and what's what's that? That's next week's project. Oh, oh, is this a little sneak peek? What <laughs> is what what is what is this? Is this a little a little backpack? It is like a little backpack. Oh, yep. So if you join us next week, we'll be on it. What did you stick in there? Uh, just just some fabric, actually. It's, it's, it's not a it's not a mystery. So we'll, we'll what what do we you. have extra of, Teresa? Fabric. Put it in there. That's right. So we'll be back next week with that one. But if you share the video, you will get entered to win. And like I said, we'll pick two winners. So one from Facebook, one from YouTube. Um, that will send you that little tote bag with a kit inside and the mug. Okay. So super fun. Please share. We love it. Um. Anything else I need to tell them before we get started? I can't remember. I think so. I think we're so, in good shape. Oh, well, what what is, just out of curiosity, what month is this? Oh, oh right, right, right. It's April. Oh, so there's a couple of things. It's April. And we're halfway through the month already, which is crazy to me because that means May is coming up. Um, I just can't believe how fast the year has gone already. It's it's as fast as last year, maybe faster. So, <laughs> <laughs> but April, a, April. April is Autism Awareness Month. So we've, we've been doing some things with that. You'll probably see some posts on Instagram and definitely on the blog later in the month about some projects that our brand ambassadors have been working on to help out, to give some stimulation toys, some little sensory uh, toys for kids with autism and some adults. There are different projects for adults with autism as well. So our brand ambassadors is, do so much great work. They really do. Uh, out in the world yeah. and here on the show yeah. and over on I Love Cuddle yeah. Fabric. Like they're always, they're helping pattern mm -hmm. tests. There's all, always conversations happening yeah. in the background we really to make all of this work. So especially Absolutely. Jackie, uh, we see you over there. You're, you're, <laughs> our, you. you're our favorite cheerleader <laughs> and you handle the YouTube comments like yes. a champ. Thanks. Yes. Thank you very much. We do appreciate them. I know they've made a bunch of different projects. The other thing that is this month is that the fabric spotlight is on the Lux Cuddle Wild Chinchilla. Is that the right name that oh, I got? Yeah. Okay. Check that. So that's Check this, this one. I got this one because I want to make a blanket out of it. I'm going to pull it out just a little so you can kind of see it just in fabric form. 
um, what it looks like. It's super dense. So if you're familiar with some of the other fabrics, it's kind of like the seal, like that density, um, maybe even a little bit more. Can I see the edge of it? Is there um, an edge hiding someplace here's available? Here's edge hiding. Let's see if I can get it pulled out. There we go. Yeah. It's not so it's maybe nice not quite as long as seal, but it's super dense. I, I think it is because okay. it's just folding weird. See, there's yeah. the denseness. Of Got it. it. So it's pretty. It's or it's pretty thick here, but it's also really dense fabric. So it has a really luscious feel to it. I got it with the uh, Vienna because I want to make a blanket out of it. I think it'll be a beautiful blanket. So I have it sitting, just waiting for me to find the time to sew it. So eventually I will. Um, all right. So. Let's get started with our project today. Today we are making the lullaby quilt. So the lullaby is just a style of quilt. If you've looked at the website or you've bought kits at some of the fabric stores, you have noticed that there are a variety of different sizes. So I think we have about eight different sizes of quilt kits, ranging from the wee one, which is a 27 inch square blanket, all the way our quilt, all the way up to the crazy eight, which is gonna be about 58 by 70, I believe. So that's a nice big one. So that's basically throw size. So we have a whole bunch of variations in between that are available as kits. Well, what we realize is that sometimes people want to make that same style of blanket, but in their own choice of fabric. So that's what we're doing today is showing you how to make the lullaby, which is a really nice, easy one. It's a little bit bigger, kind of more um, crib size, and it has a lot of variability. So it's a great baby blanket. It's also great for somebody who is uh, like, you know, I don't, want to, I don't know what the right word is. Wheelchair so, bound? Wheelchair bound. Yes. Well, like, you know, sometimes people are sedentary. older and they just sedentary. There we go. And they just can't get around a lot, but they get cold. And like, I know that that happened um, to my grandma, like near the end, she was always cold and she always wanted a blanket on her. So like, this would be a perfect sort of thing is somebody who's like, can't get around a lot and is cold. It's a great way of doing it. So it's a perfect size. I feel like it's a very flexible size. Um, so we're going to do this one today. We've reworked the pattern so it's slightly different than you'll get in the kits because the kits are actually pre-cut for you in the, if you need a 10 inch strip or two five inch strips, it'll give you a 10 inch strip and you just cut it in half. Okay. When we're doing these, we wanted to give you yardage. So but if you get the exact same look. So, so, you know, we made it so that it was easy to buy yardage for it. That's what we did. We made the pattern so it includes three different fabrics. So let's, let me show you, and the pattern is available on the, on the blog. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you will find the pattern. So let me show, show you really quick. Here's the, here's the one that we're going to make today. So we're going to make the second version of it. Okay. So this is the little by qu quilt. This is basically the generic one. So there is no kit like this. All right. You get to make it up yourself. So what you're going to do is you're going to head over to the fabric store and you are going to buy yourself a yard and a quarter of the main fabric, which is going to be your print, a quarter yard of fabric A, which is strips, and a half yard of fabric B, which is also strips and the binding. So you could also do an, another quarter yard. So you could do quarter yard, quarter yard, quarter yard. That was um, this um, binding fabrics. I think it's a quarter yard for this one. It might be a quarter, a th or so one and a quarter, a third, and, and a, a half, quarter. And a half. Oh, that, okay, a quarter. This one gets divided up, thank you. Okay. okay. I'm, getting my, I'm getting my stiletto so I can think about this harder. Okay, so you want, you want all of this. You want all of this. If you You're want to divide this. You're trying to read it upside this, down. <laughs> I am. If you want to divide this into a separate binding, get a quarter yard of, of binding fabrics. Oh and yeah, the Felix the Fox and the, the Kimber Bear kits are also technically are also lullabies. lullabies. Yes. That's the layout. Yes, exactly. It's a very common kit that we have. So this one is how if you want to make your own. So say you make that. Um, we had this up on the I Love Cuddle group the other day that somebody had bought the the pattern, bought the kit for the Cuddle Buddies. And I think it was for the Kimber Bear. And they had made it. And then they went and bought more fabric to make another one to use the embroidery files that they had bought already to make another one so you could absolutely do this and just go buy more fabric oh yeah once you pattern. once you own yeah. that embroidery file you can, you can do it all you can do what you want to with it exactly yeah but you can't do anything you want to but you can definitely well, make more yes so <laughs> so that information as confuzzled as that was i hope i hope we clarified it i think um, we're good is on the pattern when you print out the pattern it's four pages 
and I'll apologize already because my this is when my printer decided it would print this one fine and then it would just get weird. Um, so in the pattern, you actually have three pages that show you how to put it together in the two different ways. So you'll notice that here, this version is lots of stripes, okay? That's the way we're gonna show you today. Or you can do it. Not the bad printing vertical stripes. We're talking we're about talking the horizontal about stripes. stripes. Got it, okay. Yes. Yes, thank you, printer. Um, I did replace the cartridge. But, uh, and then this is the other version that you can do with the applique and just one strip. Both of these require the same amount of fabrics. You'll have different extras from each one. All right, you'll have different scraps. The Lola Mai that has the applique on it, we already did a tutorial on that one. We did it, I think, a year and a half ago or so when we were at Blue Bar Quilt up in Middleton, Wisconsin, I believe, is where we got to see yes. Jackie, too. Yeah. And um, so we did the, the lullaby up there with the applique and with batting inside of it. So if you're curious about doing that version of it, just go look for that tutorial. And I think it's how to sew a lullaby quilt at Blue Bar. And it's one that has um, rainbows and red fabric. Okay? So today we're going to do the other version. We're also going to do it without batting. So let me show you. This is the version that you can see on the cover. Wait, there. we're going to do a we're going to do a quilt without batting. We are, yeah. How exciting I mean, is technically, that? Technically, <laughs> if there are quilt police around, they might get a little upset because technically a quilt is three three layers. But. Okay, all right. <laughs> but this is the version that you saw on the cover of the quilt. Okay, so this one is done without batting, and what I want you to see is how much it drapes. Okay, so this is one thing about. So like peekaboo, Marie. <laughs> we had a we had a guest yesterday. She was two and a half, and she loved playing peekaboo. So all of a sudden, I'm like, fall back into mom mode. So this one has a lot of drape. Okay, I also made this one. If you're on the I Love Cuddle group, then you probably saw this that I was like, I ran out of binding because my binding was cut short. So I fixed it by putting this little chunk in there. Oh, this. So this this strip. Is not is clearly not that's, part of the that's binding. fixing that's fixing your uh, you played binding chicken and failed. I failed. Yes, I lost that you game. You lost the game. Got it. So I just <laughs> added some galaxy into the side. So this is another version. Okay, same idea. Just picked a piece of the fabric that was up here. So this one, I could kind of fussy cut it. Okay, so I I cut it specifically so that it would showcase. The little truck and the stop sign because that's what i wanted this one didn't have a design that was so definable in that one way yeah, so didn't i just have an stuck object it on. gotcha so i just stuck it on there somewhere and you are using um the quilting applique stitch on that now i believe Is so that right yeah mm -hmm. i think so like the, the almost like a blanket stitch yeah it's almost like a blanket stitch yeah okay. but it's a little bit different we talked about it i think a week ago two weeks ago yep. i showed the difference with it okay this one also no batting inside of it now this one is made with a little bit different fabric also some trucks um but this one i put batting in it so this one i put in the quilter's dream poly request which is what i usually recommend for quilts with the cuddle fabrics okay so this one has the batting in it this is the alternate layout that we're going to do today and i'm going to show you the drape in this Oh yeah, I can, I can tell. It's vastly different, okay? So as we're going through it today, we're gonna to talk about using batting, not using batting. Primarily, I'm not using batting here, so we're gonna talk about that. But if we wanna compare and contrast, I'm more than happy to do that. So as we walk through it today, I have five seams, six seams I have to sew. So I wanna I want to answer all those questions. So if you have any questions about them, please do share. Can okay? we talk about what fabrics we used on all of these? Can we just do a, do a rundown? Is that okay? We can, except I didn't actually look for this one. I don't remember what this one is. Okay, but we could talk about those, right? Yes. Okay. So Maybe this, I'm jumping you ahead. Sorry. No, that's but okay. But questions. So, yes, this one I'm sorry. Don't remember what it is. I looked it up, and now I've totally forgotten. Um, this one is called Sunkissed, and this one we made for Robert Kaufman Fabrics. So it's um, a minky we did for them, the cuddle we did for them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then this one is called Tractor Hall. Correct. And this one's super cute. So these are very similar. They're just a little bit different in like this is a, a brighter version. This is a more muted. So the right tone and the sure. right color for that. And it's then what tone. about the what about the back color? This one. This one's a uh, midnight marble for the binding. For the binding. Right. Mm -hmm. And let me find a big wider spot there. And then I think this green is glacier. It's Ever, galaxy evergreen. Galaxy evergreen. Yep. 
great. Yep, exactly. So those are the and fabrics the that we got. On that one, sorry, we're gonna do uh, it. Right it's now. weave. Weave. Sorry. Weave. Yep, threw my favorite. I did. I threw it on the floor. <laughs> I need to make some room, man. I got stuff to sew here. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna move this stuff over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up later and we'll deal with it. Um. Okay. So one of the things before we get started, I want to show you something. So you can download the pattern, like I said, from the Shannon Fabrics blog. Tomorrow you can download the show notes. So I wanted to kind of show you that because I think it's an important thing that we're doing. I think it's very helpful. And also you'll be able to reference back to this. So this is the, the version that will probably be up tomorrow. It'll probably be edited just slightly. This one I want you to reference because I do talk about the batting here. So if you're interested in doing the batting and you want some handout, some reference material for it. Um, I, I don't want my camera to think I should go there. Yeah, don't do that. Go, don't go there. <laughs> so this is this is information about the batting, the basting spray, and also links to the other videos. So every week we've been doing this, and then we just include information that will help you. So down here we have some picks that uh, Rose, who helps design our patterns, chose this one for her lullaby combination. This one I chose for my lullaby combination, and this one Hawk chose for his. So we tried to give you some ideas on different ways that you could do it. Um, but this information is included every week we do that. So I have a little notebook full that I include them for every week. Let me flip it around and see if we can get, get it without too much light. Um, so every week we do this. We give you little show notes that gives you the information that we talked about. That's new this season. So that's new this season that we've been working on. And I just want to confirm that they are there <laughs> and that you can get them. And they always go up the day after the show, sometimes later in the afternoon. But they're always up after the show, and you can find both the pattern and those show notes on the blog. So shannonfabrics.com slash blog is the easiest way to find it, and then you can find those pattern, the pattern and the show notes and keep track of those, all right? So if you have any questions of those uh, about those, let me know. We also post them over on the I Love Cuddle fabric page on Facebook. All right. So let's start. So I was lucky enough that Hawk cut the stuff out for me. So no see. time elapsed this time. No time lapse, but hopefully it's <laughs> all right. So we'll find out as we go. Um, all right. So on my pattern, one of the things that I want to know is that you need to keep track of which one is which. So for me, the, um, the main panel was the print, obviously. Fabric A is the green and fabric B is the blue. And the, and the green is Lux Cuddle Galaxy Evergreen. Yep. which is just a fun variation of color in it. I love Galaxy for that reason. And I think they talked about it at the beginning of the month on the product preview, which you can also watch on Facebook and YouTube. This one is Lux Cuddle Marble, which is in midnight blue, which is a, just a really nice bright blue. Yep. I really like it. And its um, defining quality is that it's been kind of like wrinkled. And it so it actually has what feels like a little bit more stretch, and it's really not. It's just that those flatten down when you pull it. So this one is a little bit different, and um, but I really like the that kind of marbled texture that it has to it. It's weird how they aptly name those. Things. Hey Teresa, say hi to your mom. Hi mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Okay, so so one of the things you want to make sure that when you're doing is you figure out which fabric is which because as we get in here, you're gonna see on here on my lame little printout here, it's gonna say fabric A, fabric B. So you need to know which one is which. Okay. So make sure that you make a note. So on mine, when I was doing it the first time, I wrote on the back, fabric A, blue, or whatever it was. So make sure that you're keeping note of that, because then as you go, you start to get a little bit confused, and they are different amounts that you've bought. So one will work for the strips and the binding, and one will only work for the strips. So careful. Okay. Um, I'm going to move this over here, because I want to talk about that circle later. Okay. I'm just going to put it over here so we can talk about it later. It's a fun little, hmm. it's like a dessert after the show. We'll <laughs> okay. Hang around for a second Be and we'll talk about that little cutter. Because the version that you're doing isn't going to have the applique on doesn't it. doesn't require it. Got exactly. It. Exactly. So I've got my, I've got my stuff. I'm going to go ahead and then put, these are my strips. I have my binding cut elsewhere. I always try to put my binding somewhere else so I don't accidentally use it. Okay, here are my little strips. Then I've got pieces that were cut. Let me see. So in the pattern, I'm going to show you again. In the pattern, it tells you which ones you're cutting. So this is where I, literally I wrote it, and I would write print. 
And then from the other main section, I'm gonna cut this. From fabric A, I look like green. I'm gonna cut this. From fabric B, which is blue, I'm gonna cut these. <laughs> so for me, that's that's really necessary. And I'm just, I'm a very visual learner, but it's also really easy to lose track of which ones you cut. So make sure that you like kind of cross them off and make notes as you can. You can always print the pattern out again. Okay, so I've got two five inch strips. And then I've got, I think it's a 17. Seven inch. A 17. Those, are, those should be sevens. They are, you're right. Okay. Seven inches, he cut him, he knows. <laughs> and then a 17 inch piece. And then we've got the backing. So when you get the, the fabric originally, you're gonna buy a yard and a quarter. You're gonna cut it vertically so that you have a back piece. And then you're gonna cut these other pieces out of that other half, all right? So that's why you end up buying that one and a quarter yard of the print, because then we just use that for the backing. You could always use a different color for the backing. You could use a different fabric. We had talked about using a brown, so it's kind of like dirt with the tractors, but we wanted to follow the pattern, so we didn't. Um, but there's a lot of play with it, and I really like that. Just make sure you're keeping track. Okay, this is when we get to move some things, because I need to spray based on the table. So which way are the strips cut? The strips are always cut with the fabric. Always with the fabric. Right. Okay. So, so selvages actually still exist on both sides of each strip. Yes, sort well, of, because sort you of. cut it in half. So you're going to have right. selvage on one end of the strip. Yes, and we're going to talk about that as we get into it a little bit, um, because sometimes that's an issue and sometimes it is not. All right, so what I've got here, so many little bits, um, is I've got my backing fabric here. All right, so this is a big, long piece. I did not sub cut smaller. Sorry, Rose. Um, <laughs> but it says to cut it at 29 inches, I think by 45 inches. I did not cut it down. I will trim it all up at the end. If you want to make sure that your pieces are actually matching perfectly, you can cut them all down to 29 inches first. I just trim at the end. Okay. So I'll be clear that we are definitely going to trim. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out. This is a directional print, so it's easy enough for me to see that this is the top and the nap goes this way. Got it. The directional print actually helps determine which way vertical. Yeah. With the fabric. Yep. This is with the fabric. Bing, bing, because that stretches. Remember, it always stretches on the width. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is find my half mark. So I could measure, but I am too lazy for that. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to fold it in half. Sorry, I need to grab my pen. Okay, so now I've got it folded in half. I'm going to kind of scritch it out. Get it as flat as possible. Um, since Hawk has been cutting fabric a little bit more, um, he's kind of noticed this thing where it likes to move on you. Right? It does. Like, <laughs> it does. The refolding and refolding, and I always say, like, the less you can kind of touch it after you get it down, get it folded as well as you can, and then just little. If I try to refold this and refold this and refold this, what I find is it just get, it's just frustrating because you're never going to get it to lay perfectly even. It doesn't match along the top here. For okay. starters, unlike cutting cotton, you can't just fold it four times and cut all at once. No. No, you have to lay it out, mark it, draw the line, use the straight edge. <laughs> <laughs> don't move it anymore <laughs> try not okay. to move it too much yeah so i want to show right up here that you can see this is not this is not even i folded it in half and it's not quite perfect this is why i do this and i don't trim it down first because then it don't have to be perfect i don't i don't want to try okay that hard to be perfect okay this is close enough to the center i'm fine with it so i do like to mark it on either side okay so now i've got my halves marked and I'm just going to flip this back out again so it's one layer. We're going to start with the middle because that's what we do. Basically, on all of the strip quilts, you're just going to start with the middle. First, and we're going to put that down, and then we build out. Okay? And I do it so that I build the middle, and then I build out from either side. That's a personal choice thing, but what I found is it's easier for me to keep track of things if I do it that way. So what I'm trying to do here is get my middle nice and flat. I've got my big middle. Oh, piece. hey, you know what? Jeremy oh. just threw up the ingredients list. <gasps> nice cue, Jeremy. Well Thank done. You. Thank Sorry, you. there's the ingredients list. We do have it listed. Yay. <laughs> um, so you're going to want those fabrics that we talked about. So a yard and a quarter of your main print, a quarter yard of the fabric A, which is the small little strip you have in there, a half yard of the other strip fabric B, which is the bigger strip and your binding, and then a 9014 stretch needle, polyester thread, 
flower head pins, of course, micro serrated scissors, fabric clips, basting spray, and batting if you want to use it, okay? We are not using the batting today. All right, so now I've got my middle panel here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fold this in half as well. In this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful to actually find the center, because I actually want it in the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. And I squish down these sides because it's a knit. I want to get the side as accurate as possible. And I am using my new little water erasable marker from Clover. Okay, so I'm marking it at the edges. It would come out completely in the wash. It will also probably get chopped off. So, okay. All right, so now I've got it here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift this. I'm not unfolding it just lifting it and getting it so that my center marks match. Okay, here, let me come in. There we go. Okay, so these both have the selvages on there. Totally <clears throat> good. Okay, I think. I'm like, does that make sense? No, I'm not sure how it happened. Oh, I guess it does, actually it does. Sorry, I had to think for a second, but this would be folded over this way, selvages on the same side. Yep. So I'm making the selvages touch. This one, I'll want to make sure I trim those selvages off later. I will do that at the end. I'm going to make sure that matches and that matches over there. Okay. I'm just going to flick those. They're going to match just fine. Okay. Get that nice and neat. So now to get this going, I have to baste it in position. So once I've gotten it here, I don't actually want to move it too much more. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I got my some muslin and my basting spray. And I've got just a just a hunk of the muslin that I'm going to lay over the right side of my fabric and pull this back. So what I want to do is pull it about halfway. Okay, and I'm just going to put this here so that I'm not over spraying on stuff that I don't want to. You could also have it completely under, which we'll do on the next part because I forgot to put it down first, but you can have the muslin over the whole thing. The other thing that I use is sometimes just the old bed sheet, and that works really well because it does just wash out. Okay, okay. what do you got there? So this is the OD505 spray. This is the one that I recommend. Okay, we like it a lot. It doesn't smell. It washes out and uh, works, works nicely. Got it. Right. Hey, I got a question um, yep. from the kits, mm -hmm. from Lullaby Kits. You get the fabric, it's folded. Yep. Are there, it sometimes it comes out with the fold lines still in there a little bit. Sometimes. How do you, how do you manage that? Is it a problem? What do you do? So usually you just wash it and it will come out. Uh, we were talking with somebody recently on I Love Cuddle, I think it was, and she was asking about it and you can steam it. And sometimes that will help. So spritzing with water and then kind of um, throwing it in the dryer and letting it but kind of not hot. Not not hot. Right. Exactly. Right. Um, but just getting getting it wet and kind of getting it back to where it's supposed to be will usually help. If it's been a very long time that it's been folded up, like all fabric, it will start to get lines on those edges. So unfortunately, it shouldn't happen in the kits that you got from the store. Should be new enough that it wouldn't happen. Um, but there is a reason why you don't let fabric sit for decades, even though we like to collect it. It really should be or refolded. That's the thing. It's like the fold would just stay for a long time. So just wash it out. Usually you can make it wash it and it's fine. And honestly, in the end, is it still soft? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's really what we want is soft fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spritz the back of this. And then I'm just going to do this thing where if you've been, ever been in a class with mine, we always talk about you're just going to swim it up. Okay, we're just going to swim it up. So sometimes so it's starting at the middle and swimming it out to the corners. Yep, exactly. And I just kind of push it underneath. What happens when you lift it up and fold it, it fold it back is it tends to pinch on itself, which then just kind of creates a little bit of frustration. Okay, so I have a little corner tucked around, fix that. Okay, so now I need to do the other side. So the what's the best way to get the, the stuff to stick? I saw you do it. But I've had the, a, the little, the, the little the, pat down, the cuddle the smack, smack down. down. Yep. There you go. So when we're doing it on the other side, the, um, the dominant tendency is to just flip it from this side. 
and spray this and bring it down. And then I'm dealing with that issue of like, I have to pick this up and hope it doesn't stick right. So you can do it that way. Absolutely. What I do is I actually, this is when I move it because it's kind of, it's stuck already. I'm going to go ahead and put my muslin down because I want to. And I'm going to flip it around so that I am spraying the other direction. Or going to swim it the other direction. Okay. I'm going to see if I can tuck these. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now I won't feel bad about getting spray on anything. Yes. So now you've folded it up neatly, picked it up as a, a burrito, basically, yes. and, and turned it around so turned that we're it around. looking at it the other way. Exactly. So what I want is the, the area that I need to put together, I need that to be nice and flat. So I don't really care if it's all wadded up over here. This is going to be able to lay down and be fine. So right now, there's no batting. All no you've batting. Got, there's not going to be any batting. If you had batting in this, you always recommend spraying the 505 on the fabric, fabric. not the batting, because right. the batting actually absorbs <laughs> the sticky really quickly. Yes. So if I were going to do it with batting, I would put the batting down, and this would be my fabric, and I would lay it that direction. I would do it that direction. Where the batting would be down, I'd lay the, the backing fabric on, then flip it over and act like this. Okay. Got it. I'm going to get a drink. <coughs> Sorry. Hold on half a second. I don't know what happened there, but, you know, it happens. It does. You're, oh, my gosh. Wait, are you human? Surprisingly. Crazy. Okay. I had no idea. All right. So now we go ahead and let's spray the back <laughs> of that. I'm going to do the same thing. Swim it up. When we get this over to the machine to sew, yes. is that gonna is that sticky stuff gonna get on your machine on the no. needle? Do anything bad? No, that's the joy of the five hundred five. Is that it? Really, is just it's superior to other sprays. It really is. Other basing sprays will not do such a great job of staying in place, not smelling really badly, getting it, your needle sticky. It doesn't all of smell that stuff. at all. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's definitely basing spray kind of got a bad reputation because there were some not great ones out there. Um, but the 505, I love it and I use it all the time. I really do like it. By okay. the way, that's not why she's coughing. It really isn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I promise I use it all the time. Um, so you can see this is nice and neat laid out. The basting spray will make it basically work as one piece. All right, which is great. So now it'll it'll kind of behave the way I want it to. I still have to use pins. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out because now I need to pin the next strip on. So it's always kind of fun in classes when we do this and like we're finally, oh, we're finally going to actually do some pinning and sewing now. Because when you do the batting, that's one other step before this. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at my pictures and make sure that I'm doing this the way that I want. So I've got my big panel in the middle. Then I put my little strips next to it. I'm going to find my little strips, and I'm going to put those on. Okay, so those were my, my blue. All right, that was my fabric B, which was strips and binding. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. Now, I'm a very visual learner, so I like to put this down, make sure I can see that the nap goes this direction. So I'm going to put it down there so that my nap flows. Yes, okay, that's the way that I want it. Now I'll go ahead and flip that over. And I kind of do a little shimmy, as you saw, to get them to go together. I'm going to go ahead and pin it. I'm going to pin on this side. And then I'll pin on this side. I'm going to be careful not to really stretch it, but I do want it to lay nice and flat. I'm going to get over here, pin this side. Back my back out again. Go over to the middle. Pin it, and then we'll just keep doing this. Or we just keep dividing it and pinning in between. And what that does is keeps it laying really nice and flat as we go here. Okay. So one of the things that I have found when doing this without batting, one of the parts that you can struggle with is the fact that you are sewing three pieces of knit fabric together. And we're sewing it the stretchy way. So it can definitely get a little a little stretchy on you, so make sure that you're being careful with it. 
and we'll deal with that when we're sewing as well. When you do use batting in a quilt like in a, in a blanket like this, uh -huh. I checked myself. <laughs> not a quilt. Um, <laughs> not you, technically, we um, still call it a quilt. The batting can act as a stabilizer. So that's a point for. Correct. Correct. So really, it, there is no best way of doing it. It's not that you should do it with batting or that you shouldn't do it with batting. It's just two different ways of doing it. And really what it is, is making a choice as to which part is the thing that's most important to you. So using the batting actually does work as a really good stabilizer. If it's your first one, I recommend using the very thin batting to go in there just to give you that extra. If you use batting, you have to quilt in these larger areas, which is, um, which is sometimes a little bit, a little extra that you don't want to do. Um, the other thing is that if you want to, you can actually use something just like a cotton fabric in here, a very basic cotton fabric, a flannel cotton. You want to make sure that you've washed those first, but you won't have to baste those or you won't have to quilt those, but they will give you a little extra stability and kind of fight the stretch. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this around because I'm going to pin both sides and then go sew both sides. I'm going to get wild like that. Got it. You can totally do it. It's fine. One of the things that's important, too, is just to keep things as flat as possible and to keep them as near as possible to you. So when I'm pinning, I really don't want to be reaching all the way over here. My back is going to kill me by the end of that. Um, we don't want to do that. If you've been to any sort of sewing classes, generally, that's a problem. We were trying to reach too far to do our cutting and pinning. So be easy on yourself. Again, I'm going to pet it, make sure it's going in the right direction. Let me show you if it's not going in the right direction, what that looks like. Okay. And it would okay. drag a lot more go. so I can see that the nap is not going smoothly. Like this, it just lays down. And this one, it like ruffles, ruffles up. up. Okay. All right. So that's the wrong way. I want to make sure that it all goes the right way. If it goes the wrong way on one of them, it's not the end of the world. We'll be okay. Honestly, but, especially with this marble and, and the galaxy as well, it is right. really hard to tell sometimes. This and one's a little easier. Tell, that one, yeah, that hide, you can't tell. It's fine. Okay. I'm going to go ahead flip it over. One thing that I can tell you that you can do too is if you struggle a little bit with the fabrics and trying to get them straight is you can actually draw a line on the fabric to show you where to line up your fabric. Okay. So if you need to have a straight line across here, you could actually draw that on there and then just put your fabric next to that straight line. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, you would have to do that pretty early on, I think, right? Uh, you can do it with each one. Oh, okay. With each row, you can do it. I'll show you on one of them. Okay. Because definitely what I have found is sometimes they can get a little, a little crazy on me. And uh, it's hard to, hard to keep them where you want them to be. And sometimes you can get a little off and you can't even really tell that you're off until you've sewn it and basted it. And then sewn it and basted it a couple of times. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, so you say the fabric likes to smile. So one of the things is like at the corner, sometimes it'll kind of swoop up a little bit. And uh, there are ways to prevent that because if you let it go, it ends up building and then pretty soon you really do have kind of a smiley quilt instead. So again, I'm just doing the, so binding them up, adding that second row of pins to keep the fabric where I want to. You'll notice that when you pin it, it will argue with you in different ways, depending on which way the nap's going, which is always, you know, kind of fun. So <laughs> keep that in mind that it's, it's probably not you. It's probably the fabric wanting to fight. The naps will definitely do that because the naps go, when they go in opposite directions, they kind of push each other instead of like one nap coming this direction, one nap going this way, they, they push against each other you want the naps to go like this in this situation they're going to fight each other so you just kind of have to show them what to do so you just pin them in place all right so let's go ahead are we going to sew over we're going to sew a little bit all right i'm going to turn on that light for you coming around okay so again i've got both sides pinned mm -hmm. on a small blanket like this you can absolutely pin both sides if i were doing a crazy eight size blanket i would not do this is way too many pins um and i can't keep track of it so I also want to show you on here, so I'm using the Baby Lock Chorus, and this one has the quilting table extension here. I will tell you, if there is any way that you can make these blankets on the added extra space, and a lot of machines come with these extension tables, do it. Um, it will, will makes a huge difference in keeping the weight off the needle, which helps feed the fabric through much easier. 
So if you've struggled at all, using that extension table can help a lot. Let's go through some basics here. Okay. Cuddle, cuddle sewing basics, because we've got some, some folks on here that are new, Okay. Uh, which is great. We love mm -hmm. to see you. So what kind we of, do. what kind of. So we've got polyester thread. We always sew cuddle with polyester thread because polyester thread has a little bit of stretch to it. So it's less likely to break. And in a situation like this, it's incredibly important. If you use a cotton thread on here and it gets pulled at all, it's just going to pop. And then your seams that are now inside of your quilt are broken and you have to do some top stitching and zigzagging and hand stitching. Or something. What's, what's interesting is that cotton thread will sew it just fine mm -hmm. and it will look great. And mm -hmm. as soon as you tug on a seam or your uh, little tugs on a seam, it's, it's going to pop. pop. And it's because cotton isn't made to stretch. That's what it is. Is cotton isn't made to stretch. This is stretchy fabric. Yep. So cotton works really well with cotton fabric. So yep. polyester thread with polyester fabric, which this is. We're also using a 9014 stretch needle. And uh, we've got, so we got the, the polyester thread stretch needle. Why is it, why is the stretch. stretch needle important and how is it different than a universal needle? So a stretch needle has a little bit of curve at the bottom of it. So it's not as pointy as like a microtex or that sort of thing. So it's got a little bit of curve so it'll go through the fibers and not puncture holes in the fibers which is what we want and then we're going to use a little bit bigger stitch length than we normally would too when you're sewing with cotton so comparatively we have a straight stitch all right and then we have it at a 3.0 stitch length I'm going to try this out and see how it works and if I feel like I need to make it bigger I'm gonna we have one more thing to talk about what's mm -hmm. what's going on back there what's that thing oh that's the digital dual feed so this is uh, part of the baby lock machine the brother machines have a similar feature that's called a move it foot and this is basically in I just bumped something <laughs> with did. the camera what did I do he bumped my tension that could be ugly <laughs> um <laughs> Sorry. so this is basically in lieu of a walking foot which you would use on another machine so there are a few different contraptions that work this way. So this is this is basically the fancy walking foot for a brother. It's especially with Baby blanket, lock, with, okay, especially with blankets, and you're sewing nice long straight seams. Mm -hmm. Having a walking foot or whatever variety of uh, move it foot or what have you uh, is the right move. Right, exactly. You want something that'll help bring the fabric through. I really like my digital dual feed. I've been using. Um, the baby locks, I think I've had them for about three years now. So one of the things is I want to keep the fabric kind of up here so it's not pulling against my needle, but I don't want to shove it through. So what I want to show you with the with the digital dual feed, you can get back down there so you can see a little better. Okay. So one of the things that I really like is it has a belt back here. So you can't really see it, but there's a little black belt. It's got a black belt that helps move it through. And so literally I can, I don't have to pull it. It's just going to work itself through. I keep my hand ninja. back here. I keep my hand back here so that I could actually just kind of guide it so that it goes straight. So that's one of the things that's more important. So I always kind of keep a hand back here and it's really kind of usually to keep some tension or to keep it just, you know, moving forward in a straight line. All right. You'll also notice here, if you look, you'll see that my edges, even though I pinned them well, and I, you know, I will say I do know how to pin. They still move. Okay, can you see that they're not even? You're there? not dealing with cotton tolerances here. So I want I want to make sure that you guys understand that, that it's, yeah, it's fine if that moved a little bit. It's okay. It doesn't matter. They don't have to match perfectly. It's also why I don't trim things until the end, because then I can make it look like it was perfect. So we're sewing this with a half inch seam allowance. Truthfully, this is a three eighths inch seam allowance here and a half inch seam allowance there. So my seam allowances on the different fabrics are actually different but we don't care. It's totally fine. All right. The biggest thing is we just want to try to get it as straight as possible and not stretching it. So if you stretch this, it'll start to work like an elastic and it'll gather. You'll notice we'll flip this over and I'll show you and it will likely have gathered just a little bit anyway, even though it's working through really smoothly and I'm not stretching it. Um, it's just a knit fabric. So a lot of that, a lot of the, the weird kind of qualities that people get frustrated by sometime it's just the fact that it's a knit fabric it's going to work a little bit differently temper your expectations it's going to be soft and it's, it's going to be yummy it's lovely <laughs> okay and i'm just going to back stitch this just a tiny bit to secure that all right so we've got it pretty straight here I'll go ahead and take the rest of my pins out and sew the other side 
and you just used a gray thread, a kind of a medium gray thread, and I did. you don't care. It's not going to show up under these circumstances. I'll show you on the back. All. It's completely gone. Totally gets buried in the nap. Mm -hmm. You'll never see it again. Yep, exactly. So it's just really, there's no point to really worry about it too much. With the threads, I use a lot of gray, as we make a joke about. Um, I use a lot of gray thread, and, um, and that's totally fine. But when I'm using a darker um, fabric, like I was using navy yesterday for the binding, and I'll show you in that, and I used a black thread for that because it was in the same, is that tone? Is that the right phrase for that, Hawk? I'm sorry. I was reading. I was reading comments. Sorry. If I'm, using, <laughs> if I'm using black thread and a navy fabric, I'm using it in the same hue, the same tone. Tone. Tone, tone for sure. Yep. Okay. I'm trying to learn my, my art words there. But I, wanted, I want them to kind of mush together. So if I'm using a light pink, I'll use a white or a light gray because it'll kind of mush together. The only ones that I really get finicky about matching would be um, like red. Red is harder because uh, most of the things will show up in that if it's not actually matching. Oh, so this is interesting. If you wanted to use, uh, if you wanted to quilt a cotton top onto a cuddle back, yep. did you need to use polyester thread on the cotton top? To piece the cotton yeah. top? No, because this, the stretch is in, is, this is a seam. This is, yeah, quilting is different than seaming it. If you were patch patchworking, um, piecing cuddle pieces together, then you need to use a polyester thread. If you're piecing cotton pieces together, you can use cotton thread. If you're quilting, that's different. And long arm quilting always uses polyester. Got it. But in, in some ways, the, the, um, the cotton pieced top actually stabilizes yeah, it's totally the cuddle safe. back. It's not going to stretch any more than the cotton does. No. Got it. Okay, good. No. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a moment of concern. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> totally fine. The um, only time it would be an issue is if you quilted it all on the top in cotton, then you have a, a little bit more of a chance. But really with the cotton top, the batting, and then the cuddle back, the cuddle isn't going to have a, a much chance to stretch at all. Got okay? it. All right, so now we've got both pieces done. I'm going to come over here so you can see this, and then we'll flip this. We'll do our, our little thing. Okay, so what I want to show you is how it looks from one side versus the other. Okay, so on here, one of the things that sometimes I can see happen is I'll get a little bit of um, puckering kind of that happens here. Oh, yeah, that. a little ripple. I haven't been able to figure out how to get it to never happen. It happens less now, but I won't say never because it definitely happens sometimes. And it okay? just did. And it and, just did. And you're the expert. Right. So <laughs> sometimes it happens. What that looks like on the back is nothing. Well, no. I mean, you could see a little bit of okay. a little bit of gathering, but really, who cares? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really my thought. It's like I get really nitpicky about it, and I can be like, "Oh, there's a little bit of puckering there." Honestly, who cares? I'm never going to lay this thing out perfectly on a wall to be photographed, except for the one time I had to do it. Um, otherwise, it's just supposed to get wrapped up around somebody. It's nice and warm and yummy. So don't panic about that stuff. All right. I'm going to show you the other side in a second. Let's lay this out. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing where I'm covering. So now I really am covering the right side, a bunch of the right side of the fabric. So you're just tucking, again, you're just tucking the muslin underneath down underneath there. The strip that I just did. Got it. And we get a lot of questions, especially when I was teaching more in classes, we get a lot of questions about, um, do, I, um, do I have to use the basting spray? The answer is no, but there's a reason why we use the basting spray that helps a lot. So if I just flip this over, what you'll notice is that there is a big, huge hump right here. And that's because it's a knit fabric. So here, if I flip it over at the end, you should be able to see it just fine. You see that big hump in there? Bloop. Okay. So right here, there's a whole big gap. So now let me take this and pull it up. Okay. So you can, if you come over the top hawk, you can see this. So this is where I pulled it flat, and this is where I did not. So this is what happens if you don't pull it flat, is you get all of that extra movement in here. So we want to go ahead and kind of give it a little tug. You remember, lengthwise does not have stretch and cuddle. So I can actually give it a little tug, and it's just going to flatten it out. Okay. So when I'm doing this, I just kind of tug and pat and tug and pat. Okay. 
all right, and get it nice and flat. You have, a, you have three layers of cuddle right here for the seam allowance and just two layers. Is that right? Yep. One, two. Maybe even four. Might be. <laughs> Wait, there might be. It's just three. Um, but there's, there's, several, there's another layer in here. Okay. Because of this coming back over. Yes. This one doesn't do that. So you end up having three layers here, two layers here. It can, it, so it naturally wants to kind of arc up over this. If you don't pull it, you're going to get a weird little hump in there. All right. And so, yeah, you'll get mountains is what we call it in class a lot of times. All right. And so you don't do need to use a ton here. of this basting spray. Nope. And, nope. and it's going to wash out the first time you wash the blanket. Yes. So no, no biggie. No big deal. And you just really don't want to get it on the front of your quilt. If you do, it's okay. It'll wash out. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to get it sprayed, and then I like to make sure that this back part is as flat as I possibly can. And then I start in the center and kind of work my way out. So you'll notice that I won't push it this direction because that's the stretchy way. So we're always going to push lengthwise and just try to get that in place, okay? I think the biggest takeaway right now is from a, a learning point of view, from my point of view, mm -hmm. is watching your hands move. Like <laughs> you have just done this so much and I'm watching how your hands move and that you're, you're showing the fabric who's boss completely. Right, and you really, you have to. And this is gonna, yes, she makes it look easy and you've practiced. That's, it's just practice. It's just it. doing it numerous times. Okay. So now one of the things, let me see if I have my big long ruler in here. I do. Yay. Okay. This is my elliptical ruler and I really like it because it's 36 inches. So it means it can go all the way across. Can you hold it onto the white so I can see that? Yeah. I was just that gonna logo. Add. There you go. That ruler right there. Okay. It's a beast. So I'm going to show you put down my put down my blue marker what happened to it okay so if i put this ruler on here though you can see how my blue is not perfectly straight do you see that like in the middle it got a little humpy right oh and some of that's just maybe the nap tucked under a little but you maybe know, a little okay. bit i'm gonna say it's probably it it's goes up a, a little, little it's smile. not it's not perfectly even Got okay, it. and sometimes that happens because when you're cutting the fabric, and I will say Lux cut old marble, is one of the harder ones to cut perfectly straight. It just is, all right? What I want is, I know this is how big? Is this an inch bigger than this? Okay, so one of the things that I can do, oh, there it is, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Did she see it? Under yes, there, she's like, it rolled under your machine. <laughs> thank you. I knew I just had it. I just had it. Okay. So I know that when this, this piece here, okay, I'm going to take a step back and explain things clearly. All right. So I'm going to measure this. This is a five inch piece. Okay. I'm coming in. When I sew this, it'll have a half inch seam allowance ish. It should be about four and a half inches. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So it should be about four and a half inches from here where my half inch seam allowance is. Okay. So I'm going to put this, and this should be right, because this would be my four and a half, and it comes up in here's four. Okay, does that make sense? Mm, no. So I need four and a half inches. I've got four inches and a half an inch. Okay, got it. So you're getting four off this ruler and a half and an, a half inch, an off inch off this ruler. Of so this half inch line mm. is at this, the stitching line basically it'll there. be where the stitching line is okay exactly that's what i want so this will okay. be where i stitch so what i can do is i can take this and so this is another thing is look i'm like okay this is this is right it ended up at two and a half inches it was a three inch strip i sewed it at a half an inch it ended up two and a half inches perfect okay Got it. so what i can do is i can lean that up against my seam that i just did i'll use my ruler and i'll mark this line and now when I sew this, I should be able to get this to come up. To Sheila, you might want to try refreshing. I don't think anybody else is having that problem for once. Because half the time when it's fuzzy, it's on our end. And, <laughs> but I think, I think <laughs> it might be yours this time. Hopefully it's not. Okay, so we're going to try. So I'm going to show you how this works. Because basically what I want to do is kind of 
fix it sometimes if I start to get a little off. This is okay, but I actually did have to do this on the other one because I had miscut one of the strips and I, I had it off at the end. That's gonna be a fun one to caption to your pocket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Close captioning up. <laughs> off the end, so that the end, the tail got smaller. And so I knew that I couldn't put my neck strip to mirror that because otherwise the strip would do this across there and I wanted it to look straight. So I just had to draw the line on there where a straight line should be and lined up my fabric. So that's what we're kind of doing here. So I'm gonna put this on here, lay this down. And if I get it to match, you can still see that little hump in the middle. Oh, the blue is sticking out more here. You're right, yeah. okay. Okay, so that really is just like, oh yeah, I guess, I guess that wasn't perfect. And that's fine, it can be caused from a whole bunch of different things. Okay, so sometimes that's caused by not great cutting. But this line is gonna give you an opportunity to course correct. Exactly. Nice. So sometimes it's because it's a cutting mistake, sometimes it's a sewing mistake. Sometimes it's just the fabric wants to do its own thing. Sometimes it's how hard you pull it. So those lines can definitely vary a little bit and giving yourself a guideline to shoot for is really helpful. You'll notice one of the things too is that I'll always kind of push the fabric or pull the fabric to make it try to be where I want it to be. It is a little grumpy. It doesn't always want to go where I want it to go. But you don't want to pin it stretched. Right, you're not, I'm not stretching it. So you'll notice that I'm just laying it down and then kind of pinning in between. One of the other things is we're dealing with a couple of different pins and I'm happy to report, see if we can get those without any light on them, that I have new pins. I'm very happy about that. There's two different kinds nice. of pins. So in that, in that pack there, we have these. Ooh, that's a Let's talk about the, um, let me see if I can find the, there's the, there's the information. So those are the heavyweight pins. 0.7 millimeter in diameter. Mm -hmm. And these, so those are the ones that you'll find that are solid on both sides. So yellow, lime, whatever you call that, mint, peach, and white. Okay. You'll also find these, which can be a little bit confusing because this is basically the same color. The thing is that it flips and it's the red on the other side. So those are the same pin. They're both red and salmon. This is the medium weight. Those are medium weight. And they are 0.55 millimeter in diameter. Exactly. So let me show Just you the Just a little, little flex here. So this is the heavyweight pin and it doesn't really bend. And this is the medium weight pin and it does. Okay. So the thing is that when I'm doing something with batting, especially I want to make sure I only use these pins. So if I were doing a larger quilt that had a batting in it, I would want to use it. This one, I can feel it bends a little when I hit the table. So I kind of have to work it back up a little. This one, it won't bend for anything, man. Okay. Great. So that's the difference between those. I'm really excited to have new pins. Mm. I started getting bent ones, which it's taken me long enough, like five years to start bending pins. I'm like, all right, it's been a while. So let's go sew this and we'll see how the next strip works. So again, I'm gonna get this in here. I'm gonna line it up the edge of my foot right Let's see if i can mark it there's my stiletto so this where the red comes off on the edge this is actually my half an inch which is hard for me to aim for so i always kind of try to aim more at the three quarter mark and hope for the best so if you notice like i don't really get a perfect half inch that's why okay so i can feel this as i'm working because i didn't do what i showed you to do before which is to kind of poof this up oh Okay, so getting as much off of the weight, it will just ease through your machine so much better. Got it. If and you it's... let the weight on the front hang off the table, it kind of wants to pull back against your needle, pull back against the walking foot. Exactly. Do all and that's those bad frustrating. Things. So then, then you find yourself pulling the fabric through, which is not what you want to do. You want to just let it guide its way through, but make sure that it has the ability to do that. And that this big the sewing extension table or quilting extension table really does make a huge difference. And like I said, it's on a lot of machines. You're probably like, why would I do that? I'm not quilting, but it is actually much easier to get the fabric to, to kind of come through. All right. So we're just going to work our way across again. Like I said, the biggest thing here is making sure that your line is fairly straight. So that this extension table helps in that regard too of having a place that your fabric can lay out more that you're not constantly fidgeting with it to get it to go through. All right. 
and make our way over to the other end and cut my thread. All right. All right, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna, I did the blue side, blue side. Now I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna show you the end of it. So we don't have to do quite so many scenes together. And it Normally gives me something she to do would this do afternoon. blue, blue, green, green. She right, would, next I would do green. Every other one, got it. But we're gonna pretend that I did and do the next step. Okay, okay. <laughs> because we're, you know, already a little over an hour. Oh my goodness. There's all so many <laughs> Marathon things I Marathon show. You. Okay, so one of the things before we, um, well, let me do this and then we'll talk about the other. Okay, so. I'm gonna come around the other side so the light's a little better. Okay, so I did my strip, I sewed it on, okay? Flip it over. Now you can see the back of the uh, um, the galaxy is super cool, and you can see how the, all those different colors kind of come into play. And I don't know exactly how they do it, but I love the I love the backside of this too. It's really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray that, and then this should come up and match that line. Look at that! It just about does. Okay, but I can see, oops, sorry. I can see where that's fairly straight. I mean, where like my fabric is fairly straight. So you just want to get it even, either to that line or at least even along that right, line. Right, because I can see, this is the thing with doing these lines. It is really sometimes hard. it gets a little finicky. It's really hard for me to see that line, by the way. So I'm gonna, I know, no, I can, I know I can I'm not supposed it. to. No, there. That's the line that she drew with the straight edge. Yep. And we're a little off of it, but we're going to keep. But it I can the use same. that as my guideline for my next strip. So even though this is off, I can actually put this on here and make my next line perfectly straight. All right. Okay. So that's the way you can kind of use it. So for me, using those lines every once in a while is actually really helpful, especially when I'm going to do a lot of strips. So I know it seems a little fidgety and you don't have to. But for me, keeping the line straight is important, and I find it a little hard to do, um, mostly because I get a little anxious about it. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we all have our little things that we can get weird about. This would be mine. Okay. So again, we want to make sure that the nap is going in the same direction. Because this is a directional print, it's much easier to be able to tell, yes, that is in the right direction. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that over. And now I get to see where that line is. And I'm just going to pin this so it's a quarter inch or a little less underneath there. I'm going to do the same thing all the way across. So now I can easily tell that my piece is going to be straight on my quilt. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm going to ask questions if. I it think, didn't make sense if I can re-verify. I think this part makes sense. I've got all kinds of really interesting questions. Okay. In, in my holding them in my brain. All right. When we get back out? over to the machine. Okay. Mostly. All right. Well, then let's talk about while I'm getting this pinned up because I'm just going to do it the exact same way. If Jeremy, if you can throw that little um, fabric choosing screenshot picture, there we go. So I, I took this and I wanted to show you guys, because basically with this lullaby kit or lullaby pattern, what you want to do is find matching fabric. So this one is the uh, the description that you would find on the website for the tractor haul fabric that is that print that you're seeing, okay? The things that I want you to look for are the names. So you can see what the name is. Can you read it off? Yeah, it's going to be DC Tractor Hull Multi. I can't actually read it. I just know okay. this now. Okay, good. So that's <laughs> what the name of it is. When you are looking for a fabric like this online and you want to find it, the it's a digital cuddle is what it is. They're digital print. So you want to find the name, which is Tractor Hull. You're going to look that up. Cuddle, Tractor Hull, you're going to find this fabric, okay? The thing that I really want you to note is at the bottom, do you see the coordinating colors listed down there? That's how you find out what colors are going to go with this fabric. If you can't find it in a store locally, you can still figure out which fabric, which colors go best. I would still go and look at those colors and check them out online and see which one you actually like because, you know, the names may not tell you exactly what they look like, but it's a great way of finding a couple of different fabrics because then what I did on um, one recently, so like even on this, on Evergreen, I could go back and I could just search for evergreen and find the fabrics that are in evergreen. Or I could find a, you know, 
we did gold in the other day, gold. Right. We wanted to find what other ca- fabrics do we have in that. And you can actually search the website by that color. So I just want you guys to know this is how you do it. And you can get all of that information from shannonfabrics.com. Just go into our fabrics, into the catalog there. Okay. It also gives you lots of other information. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this whole thing down again. All right, now that we're back to the sewing machine, you have cuddle on the top and cuddle on the bottom. Yes, and and, in the middle. And in the middle. (laughs) Do you ever, with cuddle on the bottom, do you ever worry about the nap getting stuck in your stitch plate? No, no, I've never had that happen. The only time I've ever had it get kind of stuck somewhere is when I start sewing the very, very edge. And then because it's floppy, but also I have it happen all the time with cotton too. And it drives me crazy. If they can make that not happen ever with fabric, I'd be really happy. Like this one, oh, that's, my, this one of my issues. And Russ, right, at the beginning of every seam, yeah. you start in I and then you in, backstitch to where you want to backstitch to the edge of the fabric and then go forward. Yes, I tend to do that a lot. And that re- both reinforces the end of the seam, almost mm-hmm. acts like a lock stitch. And catches and, it. And also yeah. keeps the very edge of the fabric from getting sucked down yes. into the needle plate yes the other thing that you can do is switch to a single uh, or a straight stitch plate if you want to and that only has the small hole so that you can't actually get fabric sucked down there because it'll just be one tiny little hole instead of on here you can see it has the wide the, the bar basically across here that's the hole that the needle can go down in so that it, you can do like a zigzag okay a straight stitch plate will only have a single hole here that it'll just do a straight stitch all right, I accidentally took my foot off. Okay, so that's an, that's an easy way to fix that. And I know a lot of people change out their stitch plates. It's not really something I do very much. So I found other ways of, of tackling it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take those pins out. All right. And come around me. We're just gonna. If I can, I stay here. Sure. Just trying to move out of the way for what you need. Well, I'm. Right. I'm going for a Teresa's Teresa eye view. A Teresa eye view. Got it. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna lay my strip of muslin down again, covering anything that is could possibly get sprayed over here. Like I said, if it gets on the front of your fabric, it's not the worst. It'll wash out. It's fine. We're just trying to make it easier on ourselves. And what I found is getting um, this edge is important. So by putting this here, I'm much more likely to actually spray the edge than to try to be cautious and spray away. All right. So that's important. Um, Oh, so you're making making sure that right here. Oh, don't do that. (laughs) Yeah. You actually get it. That makes sense. Because that I want to stick down nicely. All right. So again, I'm going to try to get that to lay as flat as possible. Go ahead and pull this up. And then usually I'll kind of try to give this a little bit of a tug and just make those two work, all right? And at the very edge, I can kind of do this and just make sure that they're both being pulled straight up because if you pull one to the side, you're going to have a little stretch, which we don't want to happen. Speaking of which, because we didn't actually uh, do a finish cut to width, Mm -hmm. I noticed that there's a little bit of a difference here and that's fine because you're going to re-square that, right? Totally fine. I'm just going to cut it off. Yep, Yep. exactly. So if you want to cut all the pieces perfectly from the beginning, you absolutely can. I just choose to trim them all up at the end. Um, That makes me happier than doing it midway through. So now you're going to have your whole quilt done like this. I want to show you the back. So one of the things that will happen that is different is that you can see these seam allowances. I don't know if you can see those very well. Pop up and get a little shadow going in there. You can see them better. Oh, maybe a little okay. bit. I can kind of see like you can see a, a little hump. Big, so there's the seam line. And then there's a little bit of a half inch hump and a little bit of a half inch hump. Okay. So like I said, there okay. is no, eh. there's no right or wrong. The batting. There's just a difference. The batting will hide some stuff. Fix that. Got a little so bit. if you look here, so come on, look, look down here. And I can't see that nearly as much as I can on this. All right. Truth is, I don't care. I love the way that this hangs super limp. I like it without batting. I like the really drapey, yummy, wrap it around me thing. 
it really depends on what you're doing. So I've had a lot of questions about it because people always ask, but you always have batting in the samples that you send to the stores or that we have at Quilt Market or Quilt Festival. There's always batting in them. And it's because they hang better. They hang a lot better with batting in them than they do without batting. But you're not hanging your quilt. <laughs> you're going to wrap it around somebody. So it's up to you. You don't have to do anything too special. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how we would trim this the same way we always do. Go ahead and use my little ruler. Oh, do I have a rotary cutter? Let me grab it really quick. We're just going to trim that up at the edge. So I'm not even going to care what the measurement is. I'm not going to measure and make sure that it's exactly 29 inches by 42 inches or whatever the 41 inches. I think the pattern says I just cut it off. So one of the things that you can do is that same that we did here, where we take two rulers. And if I do here and here, I can get this to cut off at the edge and be nice and straight compared to this. Okay, so oh, you're going sense? all the way back and squaring it up to over here seam. to that seam line. Got it. Yep, and then it will be nice and square on there. All right. So this is a trick that I use a lot when we're trying to line things up, and then I'll show you how I do it along the side as well. So this, it can be a little bit small, too, and that's absolutely fine. So if, let's just say, if I have some, and I do. So right here, I have a little bit. It got tucked under there. And, uh, icky. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of the backing fabric showing up here. I don't care. My seam allowance for the binding is a half an inch. So I've got a whole lot of play that I can have a little bit showing, and it's fine. All right, we're not going to worry about that at all. All right, okay. so I'm going to grab a bigger ruler to show you this next part when we're like a wider ruler. So there are differences in why I use different rulers, truly. Okay, so this, now I know that this, this top part is parallel to this. It's square, it's square that direction. Okay, I know that that is a straight line and I can use that to do my other measurements from. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna bring my ruler up to the top and I'm gonna line up one of the lines, the measuring lines on my ruler with that top cut. And then I'm gonna try to get these seam lines to match up as well. All right, so I'm gonna measure this on my, my half inch. And if I come down here, you can see that's pretty good. And I can kind of come along. What I see is it goes off here, and that's because this needs to be squared up better. Like just Oh, and mostly because some nice of it's kind of hanging off the edge of the table right. a little bit. Okay. So it will start to pull. That's not you. Okay. <laughs> like <coughs> make sure that you kind of recognize which part might be the fabric and which part might be you. All right. So then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to trim off all of this selvage, mostly because it's easy. I just trim it off and not have to worry about trying to catch any of it in the binding. It's a good idea to check both sides. Make sure that you're actually catching everything. A lot of times people don't want to trim off very much. So being extra careful that you've caught everything is really important. Okay. So we would just go down and we would keep going. We would have the rest of it. We're just Got pretending it. that's done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you would just trim your way up around all of those edges, get it nice and even, and then you're going to do your binding. We do have a video all about binding. We have several videos all about binding. Um, there should be one that you can find in the comments somewhere, or if you go to YouTube and you look for, I think it's basic binding techniques with cuddle or something like that. Um, and it'll show you how to do the regular cuddle binding with the one and three quarter inch strip, bring it around to the front and zigzag it down. That's the way that this is technically supposed to be done. We have had a few people on that I Love Cuddle group who have done it as a self-binding. That was is, a question. We yeah, had it. Which you can absolutely do. And especially I recommend that if you want to do a luff cuddle on the back. So if you wanted to choose like to do the green on the back. So the how is that going to work with a self-binding blanket? Do you need to come in and like unpick some like this much? No, what you would do you would is you wouldn't sew in? it all the way to the edge. You would, you would you would cut oh, your okay. backing. So if this quilt is supposed to be 29 by 41, I think is what it is, um, you would want to make sure that your backing was bigger than that by several inches so that you could then do the self-binding and bring it around. Okay. Okay. Got so it. You would, you would do it just a little bit differently. Your blanket, if you wanted to do it with that same yardage, your blanket would end up being 
28 inches or something, 27 inches instead wide. Okay. There's no baby ba blanket size police? There is not. There is not. <laughs> <laughs> so thankfully, that's the way it works. So I want to show you the difference here. So this is the back of this one. This is this one. Okay. So this one is nice. This is the one that only has the three strips. Okay. It's kind of nice because you have this huge section. So you have fewer strips to do. And then you have this big section that's, you know, no, no wonkiness. I'm trying to see if there's any if there's, kind of weirdness. If there's it. batting in here, you, you have need to, to add, this. you need to add quilting lines of some sort yes. by the batting manufacturer's recommendations. Exactly. So each batting will tell you how far apart it can be. We recommend Quilter's Dream Poly Request, which I believe is 10 inches apart that it can be. So honestly, even on this one that I did, this section here in the middle is big enough that I need to do some quilting in here to tack this down, especially if I was going to give it to a little one who's going to use this and wear it and wash it and love on it. And that batting is going to break down with the wear and tear of that. So we need to make sure to adhere the batting through all of it. In this situation, I would go ahead and I would just try to quilt around one of these. I would draw, so I could draw some little like stitching lines in here stitching lines in here you could totally go with it with the motif and actually kind of hide it in there a little bit if you wanted to or go all out and do big cross grids or whatever you want okay but if you use batting that's the important difference is the um that it needs to be quilted so it's one of the reasons i like doing no batting for the larger blankets because quilting on that is harder for me as someone who doesn't yet have access to a long arm so <laughs> give me time though all right. So I just want to show you <laughs> that this is this is what your back will look like. Okay. This on both sides or this. All right. So if you're if you're uncomfortable with doing those straight lines, this is a great way to practice it because you only have two. And then you have this cute little circle. So let me show the circle real quick and then we'll we'll head out. Okay, so that little circle on there is a I don't know how many inch circle, but the pattern is in your this many that many inches um, <laughs> there is actually in the pattern so we did uh, a little template for you okay so here's a little template that you would just cut this in half you can fold like trace it out twice that's the fold line that's the fold line Got so it. what I would do is I would trace this out draw a little line well I would trace it this way in the middle <laughs> so that the then edge. I could actually trace it the other direction mm -hmm. and have a full circle all right. The other thing that's kind of fun about the pattern is we put it here so you could actually put little blips of your fabric in there or at least write the colors, the fabric style that you wanted to the, like I could write the truck or tractor haul, galaxy evergreen and marble midnight blue. I could write those in there to be able to access it later to remember what what the heck I used. Okay. So I wanted to show you this tool really fast because this actually worked very well. <laughs> And sometimes I try things and they don't work very well. And I don't tell you about them. This one worked very well. <laughs> I do like it. So this is a tool from Olfa that's just called the circle cutter. Okay. And the way, and I, that's what I did with this. And that's how I made my little, my circles over there. I did it out of the plastic because I want to be able to use this over and over again. I used to use like a plate or a plastic lid. This actually works really well. So what you can do is on here. Hey Helen, we have an agreement. <laughs> it it pre-exists. She was like, make 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 sure that that Teresa uh, that you build Teresa for the long arming. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're we're good. We're good. I, I I might I might owe her a few. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm try to move this guy. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get the blade on the further side of the circle, basically, and then I'm putting this here. This is not super important to get it exactly right. Okay, basically, this is the radius of your circle. So that's important to note that it's going to spin around that big. So I'm just going to show you, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut it because I don't want you right now, um, but you're going to pull your blade up. Oh, is there a, it's got a safety like a regular? It does. And okay. I will tell you, this tool is frightening to me because it has not just one, but two parts that will really hurt me. So this part <laughs> is very sharp. Okay. And this part, and I can actually just do it. I might as well, right? I like that you can see the grid of so your cutting see. mat. This is, yep. Yeah. Okay. 
So I need to find basically the middle of this. So it should be at four and a quarter inches, right? So if I kind of put this in here and kind of pop it through, I could see, will this fit all the way around? Yes. So this is what I found. So this is why it's a little hard. It's because you got to hold this. So what I found when I did it before is I taped this plastic to the table. <laughs> and then I was able to run this rotary cutter around it. See how it wants to move? Here. I'm tape. You're tape. Don't run over my fingers. I'm going to try not to. <laughs> okay. So it will start to push. You just kind of kind of let it off. Come on. There we go. Think. Okay. So this is what I found, is that I couldn't do it perfectly, and I certainly couldn't do it perfectly on the cuddle. Just trim that up. It's fine. Okay, we're just going to, like, make that match the way we do with all the cuddle stuff. Think. Think. Perfect. Okay, perfect little circle. So that's how you're going to use this thing. I'm going to, like, put everything away very quickly. It really does scare me because it's a lot of sharp parts. So what I found is if you could do it on cardboard, you could do it on this. Like taping it, I did, I used um, the embroidery tape. So I just taped it all down to my cutting mat and then I did it a little bit at a time and I got a circle. For me, it was easier, it's easier to do it that way and actually have a template that I can use later, which is very nice, but it is a little bit funky. It would probably work better on just regular paper, but actually taping this stuff down made it work pretty well. Got it. I just forgot about that till now. So this, this rule or, or this cutter, sometimes I've seen it in stores and I've been like, I don't know what I would use it for. Now you know. Now you know to make perfect circles, okay? Or just use the template that's in the pattern. There you go. All right? Okay. I have a question. Yes. Can you embroider on this oh, before 100%. you applique it on? I thought so. 100%. That's a great place to embroider. You can really get creative with it. You can get creative with appliques. You can appliques something completely different on there. You don't have to use a circle from the main fabric. You could do monograms. You could do birth announcements. You could put another Kimber Bear on there, um, or the Felix the Fox. Those are very cute. Any sort of embroidery project could go on there, or applique. I've seen them where people applique names on them, all sorts of fun stuff. This is a project that lets you get to be creative, and that's what we're kind of hoping that you can do, is to use this pattern, choose the fabrics that you love, embellish it the way that you want to, and make this blanket your own. It really is a super easy blanket. Like I said, this version is seriously two seams. It's three pieces, <laughs> two seams and binding. So if you want an easy, quick blanket, I think it took me about an hour and a half to make it total. Um, very easy. So do this yourself the exact same way you're going to do all of the sizes. So remember when we talked at the beginning, we have wee ones up to crazy eights. Any of those sizes, you're going to make it the exact same way that I did here and then bind it. All right. Look, Any other questions I need to answer? I, I feel like we should take the um, the how to make a self-binding blanket version uh -huh. of this on to I Love Cuddle Fabric. We should continue uh -huh. that conversation there. We can. Yeah. So if you are not part of the I Love Cuddle Fabric group, um, I would suggest that you join us there. It is a Facebook group. So uh, we have, what did we pass? 23,000, I think, uh, on there. 21,300. 21, I there think there was go. a three in there somewhere. Yep. So 21,000 people are on that group. It's a great group of people who are all interested in sewing cuddle fabrics, whether it's for blankets or clothing or toys, all of it. So all of the questions getting answered, and we love seeing what people make. So I encourage you to join the group if you are not there already and come see what we're making. Ask all the questions. We can definitely show you more about using a self-binding technique with this quilt as well. Uh, is there anything else? We have winners. Let's do that. We can do winners now. Okay, so we should have a winner from all Facebook right. and YouTube. Kathy Marino from YouTube and Lisa K uh, Carberry on Yay. Facebook. Yay, thank you very thank much you, for folks. sharing the video. Please email us at info at shannonfabrics.com and send us your name, your mailing address, and your phone number so that we can ship that stuff out to you as soon as possible. So when we get that information, we'll put the order in and send you some goodies right away. We'll be back next week with another episode of Sew Together Tuesday. We're going to be making a cute little sleepover cinch sack. I'm excited about this one. Talking about embroidery, we're going to do some embroidery on that one. So you can go ahead and show... Um, we, they saw so it at the beginning. We but I'm just teamed gonna... up with uh, Reen Wilcoxon, who is Embroidery Garden. You might be familiar with her if you're an embroiderer. 
she designed some designs that are specifically for this project, which I'm very excited about. And so we're making a little sleepover cinch sack to take oh, PJs and toothbrush and all that good stuff over to grandma's house for uh, the weekend. So that's, that's the idea behind this. I want to talk a little bit about embroidery. I'll show you how to put the cinch sack together. So bring all your embroidery questions. We'll be, we'll be answering all of those and showing you how to do it. So it should be very fun. And that maybe that'll prove inspirational to add a little bit of embroidery to your lullaby quilt. So um, lots of fun. And then we'll be taking a break after that for a week. And we'll shoot back over to LA. So lots of fun. We'll see you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, right? Happy sewing. Happy sewing.